distinguished members of the media fraternity in Chennai for your presence here. Uh, the purpose of this uh, press meet was to really, um, you know, uh, articulate a 10-point growth and development uh, and reform plan for Indian universities, uh, which will ultimately help Indian universities to uh, reach global excellence and also be part of international rankings. Uh, the broader context of this press conference was um, a recognition that uh, uh, we simply uh, cannot build a $5 trillion economy without focusing on the human capital and the human development potential that has to emanate out of our universities. Uh, we've been talking about the need for building a $5 trillion economy and that's a very, uh, let's say, noble and important objective that we need to have for strengthening our economic institutions and also to develop that uh, capacities within our country. But the heart of that uh, challenge is how do we do that without equipping our universities and to upgrading them, also enabling them to become truly world-class institutions. Universities are expected to be engine of growth and innovation as well as social and economic development unless and until we have world-class universities in India, we simply will not be able to achieve that potential. Uh, it's also important to mention that uh, if you look at other countries which have tried to do that in recent times, including countries such as Singapore and South Korea, cities such as Hong Kong and Taipei, also uh, our large neighbor China, there has been enormous importance given to higher education. Uh, universities have been the driver of economic growth and development in these uh, countries. So, unfortunately, the existence has been lamented by our Prime Minister, but also many other education uh, leaders, uh, that not a single Indian university is one among the top 100 in the world. While there are universities in China, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in South Korea, in Taipei, which do figure in the top 100 in the world. So, one of the most important elements of that is uh, our, uh, you know, relatively, uh, let's say, indifferent approach towards internationalization. We need to develop a stronger sense of internationalization in our campus, internationalization with regard to faculty, students, staff, research, curriculum, uh, partnerships, collaborations, uh, inward mobility, immersion programs, exchange programs, you name it, there has to be a stronger impetus given to internationalization which ought to become the heart of institutional building. The sixth is something which we have also struggled in India which is about hiring of outstanding faculty members and inspiring teachers as academics uh, who are prolific researchers as well. Uh, across India, there have been a number of challenges in this. I'm sure some of you are aware that nearly 35 to 40 percent of the uh, faculty positions are lying vacant, unfilled in our central universities. Uh, even IITs and IIMs have over 30 percent faculty positions lying vacant, unfilled. The state public universities across the country have over 50% faculty positions lying vacant, unfilled for several years. We need to not only ensure that we fill up these positions, but we also need to attract the best minds in our country to be able to attract them to come into academia. Uh, and I'm here to, to reinforce the larger points that Raj has made. Uh, I'm new to India, but I'm not new to higher education. Uh, I've been involved in some form of higher education at some of, at many of the top-notch U.S. universities, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, Berkeley, Stanford, as a student, teacher, <coughs> administrator, and parent for more than six decades, sort of preparing, thinking about what I would say uh, this afternoon, uh, I came up with this, and that's major part of my life has been affiliated with universities. And I thought deeply about that. And I am absolutely convinced that a quality education is the single most important factor in assuring social mobility, social pro progress, and prosperity. Uh, that is true in the United States, uh, and I think it is equally true uh, in, in and just as a note, I mean, I've lived in California now um, for more or less three decades. And I 
I arrived at the dawn of the knowledge economy, the, the burgeoning of the knowledge economy uh, at, at Silicon Valley. And Silicon Valley is a, is a concept. It's not a geographical location as such. And Berkeley, which is across the bay from the Silicon Valley, you know, sort of partakes in that. And to watch the growth of Silicon Valley and the growth of the computer industry, uh, as a re and largely as a result of what was going on at uh, Stanford and Berkeley, is just quite extraordinary. And there's no reason that can be duplicated and improved upon elsewhere. I think I'm going to just sit down, answer questions, uh, listen to your questions. Uh, one of my earlier jobs also was I was a press secretary to the mayor of New York, so I'm familiar with press conferences too. Thanks. The quality education and the aspiration is not to fulfill. International rankings are uh, top 100 universities in India. Uh, even the top 200 are universities. So, we have quality education, research focused education, innovation in the university. We have a five trillion dollar economy developed. We have faculty research focus. Just here, our faculty research focus on the more. Other social innovation, co entrepreneurship, co approach startup culture, co normally useful. So, in a way, the most important thing, our not to put the work, our park of India, our five trillion dollar economy, our aspiration, world class universities, so higher education opportunities, so higher education sector order investment to role, role important.